Okay, right then. So, the way I'm going to be doing this tier list, as I mentioned before, is this is going to be overall best weapons for roads, whether it's 1vx, whether it's small scale, whether it's PvE. I'm taking everything into consideration, and I'm going to rate them based of what I would use them for. So, already off the bat, because it's pissing me off at the moment, controversial one, Blood Moon is going in A. Now, I know what you're thinking. Banj, Blood Moon is all you use. It was all I used till I realised that people are now understanding what the weapon does. And it's insanely good for PvE, insanely good for clearing group dungeons, but holy shit, if you come across any sort of range or any sort of kite comp in roads, it is rough. It is the roughest shit. The fact that yesterday I got, bully I got bullied by a tier 5 warbow, and the only reason I survived is because his teammates dismounted and let me get my Hellion jacket off, was brilliant. That, that was a saviour. I would have died to a tier 5 warbow purely because he had assassin jacket and frost shot. The weapon's good. It's probably the strongest brawling weapon in the game at the moment. I don't think there's anything that can face to face it. But it's so shit if you come across any team of any sort of range. But yeah, once again, PvE, insanely good. Like, it's probably the second best strongest PvE weapon right now besides nature for, like, solo players. If you've got, like, um, a nature on your team, or if you've got something else on your team that actually is able to catch targets, great. Blood Moon is insanely strong. Like, there's no, there's probably, like I said, there's nothing stronger than a Blood Moon. If you're solo and you're playing Blood Moon, anything Tier 4 that has any sort of mobility is going to outkite you because your mobility is conditional. The only thing you really have if you don't have stacks is boots. Anything, like I say, W1 on a fire, frost shot on a bow, arcane enigma blade is going to outkite you. So, shit. But I do love the weapon. Earthrune is a given for small scale. It's going to be A. Honestly, Earthrune in Rhodes is probably one of the most, like, demolishing things you can have because it's so like roads are so tight Earthrune pretty much covers the entirety of the roads as like a frontline tank with judy armor like it just goes so hard it goes so hard we played comps before with Earthrune and like follow-up damage with like hellfire hands uh great i mean you know like you're not dumb but like yeah it's probably the best tank right now for small scale in roads but I'm not going to put it S tier because Earthrune, like, overall, like, would I use it for, like, ganking in roads? No. Would I use it for 1vx in roads? No. Like, it's just basically your small scale tank. Hellspawn in roads. <laughs> Hellspawn, I'll put in B. It works if you're in small scale. If you're solo, it's crap. Because, I mean, everybody knows Hellspawn, the moment you switch form, you're you're just screwed. But it is pretty strong. Like, Noma Poncho's got a really, really cool build of it with um, Root W, Royal Helm, and I think he uses something like Druid Robe or something weird like that. So it actually can perform, like, insanely good, but you also... You are playing as a clump and dump, but you are also squishy as fuck, so that's, like, something to take into consideration. Light Cooler, honestly, I'm putting it in C. It's not... It's not viable. The cooldowns are too high. You can't... You're, you're realistically playing for one sort of clap. And with most comps in roads, it just isn't the one. Especially, like, I've played it 1vx before. It's not nice. The, the cooldowns are way too high to be able to um, 1vx of it. And, I mean, realistically, when I'm thinking of, like, this tier list, I'm thinking what most people, like, kind of expect me to use and what are like the best things to get into roads with and light cooler definitely ain't the one it it ain't it ain't great it ain't great primal on the other hand is the first s primal is a nasty weapon primal is actually a nasty weapon whether you play it in small scale you play it solo if you know what you're doing and you can rotate your abilities well. It's so strong. Plus how tanky it is. Plus the amount of damage it has alone is like it is actually so perfect. 
it might not be the best in 1vx not as good as like blood moon would be but it still can perform you can out kite people with the fear you can stun people in small scale it's perfect with root w like honestly it's usually my go-to now my go-to role if i'm playing small scale i always go for a primal prowling uh b Prow I, i'm even tempted to put it in c but prowling energy cost is way too high way too squishy and you're basically playing for five stacks so you're pretty much just playing single target then you're gonna have to kite you're gonna have to hope that they don't catch you like it's good it works really well in mist but it's too squishy to play in roads like if you're realistically thinking like small scale is it ever gonna work not really ganking in roads it can work like i can't remember who mentioned it earlier in chat but ganking it can work in roads like if you're going for gathering spots all great and everything or if you're ganking like solo players on chess great but overall just way too squishy for roads like most of the time you're never realistically going to make the profit back on a weapon like that if you're going to do the sort of thing that i like doing blood letter s tier blood letter was basically what we used before death givers when um when we were going for 1vx fights it's so nice to be able to just dismount on a pve team on a gold chest or on a blue chest you've got the mobility you've got the damage you got the execute you got the reset you're playing melee so you can play hellions like it's it's just perfect you got the iframe it's like the perfect weapon and while i'm at it as well where are death givers where are those little death givers where are they where are they i can't see them i'm blind where death givers they gotta be around it death givers there death givers also s death givers at the end of the day 100 percent. could you move there you go death givers is the number one weapon for solo roads even small scale it works everything works when it comes to death givers it's the perfect weapon the best weapon for gathering aspects and killing aspects because you got a dash on q you can get away from the fiber aspect you can get out of the tree's root uh basilisk you can dash through if he tries shitting on you um and again small scale you basically play the execute role it's just so useful playing into the teams when you can just q in the middle triple stack e q in the middle triple stack e q in the middle triple stack e then i frame their big damage then you've got your reset it's so perfect live touch a look i played i played live touch with face scale robe and color purity it is probably in it's in the top five most broken weapons in this game holy blessing e every 10 seconds it's so nasty the 1vx's i had on live touch purely because teams couldn't touch me they couldn't interrupt me and i would just bully the shit out of them using mobs was so nasty so nasty like i actually don't think there was more fun well, there, well i've obviously had more fun when i was playing arcane but there wasn't much of a time when i was playing a weapon like live touch where i had more fun in roads probably one of my favorite streams i ever did out playing gankers when they were like all jumping me trying to purge nothing because what are you gonna purge a uh, fire ring or my e you can't purge any of it you can you can can you purge a holy blessing i don't know maybe i guess you can but yeah that's probably like one of the most criminally underrated weapons for roads i'm telling you pv is perfect if you want to do small scale when you're playing as a healer life touch it's probably not great but like overall i'm like just i'm just thinking about solo here the the solo gameplay was so fun with life touch and like i say the e and holy blessing together is just so broken it really is root bound root bound is a tier again it's probably like one of the most broken weapons in the game right now it just offers your team a full reset with double you can run double duty armor and your team just gets the easiest reset ever not really much to say about root bound I would put it in S tier, but I uh, like I uh, uh, nah like nah because you nah, nah nah I'm thinking like you can't realistically like if you're a solo roads player you're not gonna run rootbound but it is so strong for small scale. Halifall, I mean Halifall is like a we're just gonna take it as a healer realistically in roads at the moment. 
The problem I look at Halo for is the Cleric Cow nerf. And realistically, you can play it Scholar Cow, which is like your other option. Um, PvE as a healer, it's probably one of the better options. I put it in A tier. Realistically, though, with the Cleric Cow nerf, Halifall doesn't really perform in roads like it used to before. But I'm not going to say too much about healing when I don't actually have that much of an input on it. Even Song. Even Song is once again probably one of the most broken weapons that nobody uses. Not for 1vx, but small scale alone. Oh my god. The heel cut and slow for a setup on a clap is fucked. It's so fucked. I've only I, I, I never see anybody play Even Song. It's probably a ZBC weapon. I never see people say it in, I say it. I never see people play it in roads or small scale. Bro, I'm telling you. Replace your support with an even song. Give them a mimic. Give them a, um, a shield Q. You won't regret it. You won't like it's it's so strong. It's so good. Not even in ZBZ people are playing it. It's it, again. It's like one of the most criminally underrated weapons in a game. It's so screwed. 75% heal cut. I think it is. If I'm not wrong. If I'm not wrong. Let me check. Where are we? Yeah. It's gross. It's so gross. So gross? So gross. It, it's... It's f It sets your team up so perfectly. Life curse... And... Yeah, it is max three people, sure. But if you pick the right people... And you know what you want to clap. Like, there's your priority targets down instantly. They can't recover. They're not going to be able to recover. Life curse. I mean, what, what, we, what realistically we're going to say about life curse. In small scale, it's... In small scale, it's okay. Like, I put it in B tier, realistically. I don't really see that many people playing it. I never see one in Rhodes. Solo, not great. The channel and E isn't good. Realistically, your better option is Shadow Caller. So while I'm saying that, let me find Shadow Caller. Shadow Caller. And then you know what? I'm actually gonna put Life Curse in C, Shadow Caller in B. Shadow Caller at least can perform in um PvE. Not great in PvE, because obviously like the knockbacks, the stuns, all that type of shit, you're kind of relying on beam. Um But overall for roads, even in like small scale and stuff like that. Like the the fact that the uh, the pierce you've got the option of like clothy or you've got the option of leather, like it can produce a fucked amount of damage. I've used it solo before. The best I got was like one v four or something like that. Just playing Kaiti, just playing their energy, but in reality, not great. One hand fire. It's gonna go in B. It is a strong weapon at the end of the day, but like I'm thinking realistically, like we got Death Givers in S, Blood Moon in A. It's one of the essentials in small scale, I get that. But for like solo gameplay, realistically not going to happen. I really only see like one hand fires in more of like the shitter groups, honestly. Like the majority of the shitter groups I come across, like the, the shitter small scales I come across are using one hand fire realistically the best option is wildfire but then is wildfire on the same level as like blood moon earth rune life touch that type of stuff not really but like it, it, it's just not overall as a Rhodes weapon like if you're thinking realistically because i keep going back and like i'm like okay realistically my tier list is gonna be would i use it for solo but I'm also taking in, into consideration like larger scale PvE, small scale, larger scale PvP. Like I'm also taking a lot into consideration. But the majority of it's prom predominantly going to be based off would I use it for solo. One hand arcane. I mean one hand arcane I'll put in... 
I'm going to put both One Hand Arcane and Witch Work in B tier. They're good in small scale. They're decent at PvE, but in reality, like... After being nerfed like nine times, are they really that good anymore? Nah. The only way which we were talking about in the stream earlier that they're realistically playable in small scale now is if you've got Mimic and most Arcane players aren't good enough to understand how Mimic works. Um, but which works like an insanely good setup. I mean, we've seen it so many times before on the YouTube, like using mobs to kill players like with which work is just like probably the best setup you have. So I'm more inclined to put it on A, but like, does it really match Blood Moon, Even Song, Halifor, that type of shit? Not great. Great Axe, definitely A. Stalker Jacket, with like, it's just, it's just so strong. It's so strong, it's unreal. Like, there's not really many faults you have on Great Axe. Reflectable, sure, but also you can cancel it. Like, you can't really say much against that. Realm Breakers, probably a B tier, honestly. Again, it's not a huge essential with Shapeshifter meta now, having Polymorph. Like, you used to use Realm Breaker as your setup and your, like, uh, percent uh, HP reduction, but there's also Polymorph now, which just is just way stronger to take out single targets. Realm Breaker, realistically, is more, like, larger scale now than smaller scale. I don't really see it used as much, purely because of the meta. Uh, one hand bow, shit. Miss Piercer, you're basically only playing it with Ray of Light, or if you've got like, um, if you've got a uh, tank on your team to hold somebody down, then Miss Piercer can be good. But in reality, like, it's more of a troll fun weapon than it is actually serious. Uh, Baden isn't quite A tier, it's more B tier on the same level as like Witch Work and Arcane, I would say where it can perform it has performed it's actually probably been one of like my better weapons i've ever used in roads when i used it but considering how much the meta's changed baden isn't you, you'd play it you'd honestly rather play it in a small scale than you would solo purely because of the interrupt on on holies that's the only reason it would work Claws C tier, but like that's purely because the only way you're really going to see a Claws in Rhodes is if you're ganking like a Kelly on Road. Claymore. Claymore after the buff. I'm kind of intrigued to put in B tier, but I also don't know if it's worthy of B tier. Uh, you, know, you, know, you know what? It is kind of worthy of B tier. I think there's some hidden tech you could find uh, with Claymore playing roads and small scale solo it's obviously not going to perform considering the e is single target and the um i know it does uh, do damage through the people you charge through now so i'm taking that into consideration but i still don't think the damage output is enough to make it viable to be an a i haven't seen anybody really use it yet because obviously again it's single target style and it's not huge one hand frost probably gonna go in the same level as b maybe even c again the only time i really see one hand frost in roads is if they're ganking with like um graveguard armor and like sleepy cap or something like that it's not gonna be huge like it's decent aoe damage but still like something like permafrost would take a tier because permafrost, in reality, is probably one of the essentials, again, for most small scales. Um, just in general nowadays. So strong. And if, you're, if your frost player's got fast fingers with a scholar robe, it's going to be deadly. Chill how is a C. Honestly, you don't get any value out of a chill how playing in roads. Kingmaker, pff, too predictable, honestly. You really never see anybody playing Kingmaker anymore purely because of how predictable it is. Um, I don't think there's much I can say about it, honestly. The knockup's great, but then you're also just waiting, what is it, 25, 30 seconds for cooldowns on Kingmaker? I don't actually know. So it's realistically pointless. Uh, pretty sure that's Great Hammer. Great Hammer is an A tier purely because of shapeshifters right now. A great hammer catches me out while I'm in werewolf form. I'm screwed. 
have astral staff uh i don't think so but we're gonna consider this to be an astral staff i don't like it <laughs> i i hate astral staff this might be out of spite but i hate astral staff in general i think what they did by putting a dps in the arcane weapon line is actually so gross it is yeah it's not that is purely out of spite i'm sure it's good don't care i really don't care quarter staff c tier solo gameplay is pretty shit small scale where do you really see it mm, pve quarter staffs are pretty crap the only place realistically you're gonna see it is alongside a claws maybe if you're ganking like coming out of assassin jacket getting a knock up playing stun run maybe i could see it being played that way but quarter staff just ain't a Rhodes weapon Carving's pretty much always an essential for small scale A tier. Uh, solo gameplay isn't great, but I mean, nobody really expected 1VX to be good with um, carving in general. I've done it a few times, but then you're basically playing, it doesn't matter what you're playing, you're basically playing splitting slash E into mobs anyway, and like just using mobs to your advantage. Heavy crossbow, C, not really much I can say about it. Decent for PvE, but realistically, are you going to really see it in small scale? No, are you going to see it in um, solo gameplay for Rhodes? Not really. It's just not a Rhodes weapon. And the thing is, when I'm talking about like solo gameplay, I'm thinking 1v5, 1v6, 1v7. That's basically what I'm basing this shit off. One hand cursed as well. Pointless in Rhodes. Like, don't even think about it. Siege bow, I can actually put in B because I got smashed by a siege bow the other day. The other D, the other day, just getting held down by a heavy mace. Absolutely nothing I could do. It is just a strong weapon in general. Obviously, it only got one use, but that's pretty predictable. Bridled fury, yeah, I got a funny clip with Paul, but in reality, not many people understand the weapon well enough to make it worthy of anything hide and beat here dagger pair d obviously probably one of the shittest weapons in game at the moment let alone whether it's in roads or not the best i ever did on a dagger pair was 1v3 and i'm pretty much lucky that i didn't die for some reason no idea how i pulled it off the ah, uh, you know what maybe i could up it to c tier Purely for ganking gatherers, it might be okay. With like face scale rope one shot now with uh, frost shards, that might be okay. But overall, PV shit, PvP, like 1vx solo gameplay for roads, shit. Not great. Demonic actually is worthy of B tier. I don't like the weapon, but in actual fact, like... Yeah, it... it it can help a small scale or a solo kite. Not going to be great for PV, but it is overall it's okay. Kind of the same level as I would put it like Shadow Caller, honestly. Where PV is going to be better than the PVP, but it can be useful, especially in small scale. What are we tiering? Ro weapons for roads. Uh, what weapon was this one again? It was Divine? Divine Staff? What does Divine Staff do again? Let me make sure. Spells. What is the E? Oh, that's the big, big... Um, eh, eh, C. Wh whenever I see a Divine Staff, usually they've missed everyone because usually a Divine is going to be used for resetting and most of the time when people are resetting, they're running for their lives anyway against me. So whenever I've seen a Divine, it's been pretty pointless. Quarter Staff... I'm going to put in B tier purely because of like the Kaleon Rhodes gankers. Same with Bear Paws. Bear Paws in Rhodes are only going to be useful against either transporters or if you're ganking gatherers. 
PV not great. PvP 1vx not great. Realistically, both quarter staff and bear paws for Rhodes is purely going to be ganking um, uh, Kelly on transport roads. Bolt can't st Bolt. What did I say it was? Did I say double bladed? What did I say? Quarter staff. I mean double bladed. You know what I meant. Bolt casters pointless. Probably one of the shittest weapons in the game right now. 4Gs. I had a lot of fun with them, but they're B. Stalker jacket, Spectre hood was the only way you make it work. Can be really good. It's actually a high B. Honestly, I'll put it next to Hellspawn. It can be good just to interrupt healers and just piss off holy healers. But it's not realistically like solo gameplay. You're going to be able to clear chests just about. But are you going to enjoy yourself while doing it? Not really. Mm. Yeah, I think I mean, I think realistically, if you're playing a four jammers, I don't think you're realistically playing four jammers as a tank anymore. I think that's completely like past its point. I think you're just playing it almost as a support. Whether you run like Judy Armor or Duskweaver, or if you want to run Stalker Jacket and just cause problems on the back line, that's what I used to do. Weeping Repeater, PvE weapon, not great for PvP. Overall, it's on most teams' lists for, for Rhodes PvE, but again, solo, not great. Small scale, not used, not honestly, no, no real use. Oathkeeper. <sighs> Oathkeeper in the right hands is strong, but I mean, if we're going to place it anywhere, it's going to be like here. Oathkeeper in the right hands can be strong as like a support um, backup defensive tank. But also, like, it's so predictable. It's so predictable. The moment you see that Oath Keeper come out, you know to, like, disengage instantly or to just walk away. It's it's kind of too predictable for me. I never really see an Oath Keeper as a threat. <laughs> Galloper. Galloper is so shit. Dual swords. <laughs> okay for PV. I'm going to put it behind. I'm going to put it next to Baden. Dual swords are okay for PV. Not great for PVP. At least in roads. Like solo, don't get me wrong, it's great. But. Yeah, honestly, like, I don't know, I don't know. Everybody knows what Jewel Sword does. It's so predictable. Rhodes tier list, yeah, boy. It's so predictable as to what it's going to do. The only time you're realistically going to see it is with Iron Will uh, for a Gatherer. It's the only time you're going to see it. So, for like, for, for, for that reason, it's got to go in B, but any higher, yeah, it's pretty crap. Have a good one, Copboy. Dawn Song is a high B. I'm going to put it... Where am I going to put it? Eh, you know what? I'm actually going to put it in A. Dawn Song used properly in large-scale roads PvP is great. For small scale, isn't as good. But it is, it is an insanely strong weapon and is one of the essentials for raid zone PvP. Like 20v20s. Can Primal 1vx? Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. I think that's great fire. C. AoE damage, sure, but in reality, not great. Great nature, I'm going to put next to Blood Moon in A. Where both of them hand in hand go great. And I'm also going to put... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is Iron Root? Iron Root, I'm going to put there as well. And one hand nature, I'm going to put there as well. All really good. Iron Root and Great Nature go perfectly with something like Blood Moon or just any sort of duo in general. One Hand Nature is like, in actual fact, probably the strongest 
Um, small scale healer weapon. So in actual fact, I'm just going to put it there. That's why I was... Uh, fuck it, whatever. Great na it, it looks like great nature to me, so I'm going to put it as great nature. That's obviously great nature then, but I couldn't care less. You got the idea, I said the words, that's fine. Soul Scythe. While I do love Soul Scythe, I'm a chucking... I'm going to chuck it high C. I'm going to chuck it high C. Because I can imagine Soul Scythe being a really good defensive or actually like a setup tank. But in actual fact, I haven't seen anybody use it. Like solo gameplay, it's not going to be good. Um, and what else we got? PV, it's obviously going to be shit. I'd love to see somebody use Soul Scythe. In small scale, though, I'd love to see that. Tier list of Rhodes fights? Yeah, boy. Rhodes weapons overall, honestly. Brimstone. Pff, I'm pretty sure that's Brimstone. That just put you in D. So shit. Uh, pretty sure that's Glaive. Nobody uses that. Halberd, 100% A. 100% Halberd's in A. Don't know where I'd put it. I, don't, I think none of the A is actually in order, but that's fine. Halberd on the front line, nasty, nasty. I've seen Paul using a Halberd on the front line. Teams cannot recover from it. Carrion Cooler, you'd think's the same, but it's not quite the same. Carrion Cooler can go like low B. Honestly, the travel time shit. Travel time shit, so predictable. It's like. Yeah, it, it it it's just not a great weapon. In comparison to Halberd, Carrion Cooler is 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 nothing. Um Cheers, Axel. Where was I? Where was I? I'm lost now. Spirit Hunter pfft. I mean Spirit Hunter like clump and dump is fine, but realistically, like nobody's playing Spirit Hunter and Rhodes unless it's PvE. So in terms of like PvE, it's okay, but then if I was if I was a Rhodes team, I'd be playing like Curse Skull with PSW instead. Like that's realistically what I'd be playing. Great Holy Oh man. Great Holy is just so shit. Like It's a really good reset, but it's also it just like oh man. I'm going to put it low B, because in reality, it is one of the better Holy Staffs. But for Rhodes, like, it's just so predictable and so easy to just interrupt and just smash through. It's not great. Like, in reality, Blight is a much better option. Blight easily goes A tier instead of Great Holy. Nature Staff overall is just the better healing weapon. Like, that's just a given. Everybody knows that. But if you compare, like, Blight and Great Holy, you take a Blight any day of the week. I think you recover more HP, you can move, non-interruptible. Like, there's no reason not to go Blight over a Great Holy. Uh, that was Fallen Staff, was it, I think? I believe. And then Fallen Staff, what's the ability on it again? Um... It's the circle, isn't it? I think I got Divine and Fallen wrong, but they're on the same level anyway. They're both shit. Whenever I see either a Divine or a Fallen, I think I got a mix around at the start, but at the end of the day, screw it. Whenever I see them on a team, I pretty much know I've won. Because just in comparison to Halifall, Life Touch, or any of the natures, whenever I see a Fallen... I don't think I've ever lost a fight when there's been a Fallen Staff involved. Infernal, I'd want to see Infernal do well, but I just can't see it being good. I think that's Infernal at least. If it's not, well, I'm calling it that. It realistically just hasn't really got a use in the game at the moment. It really doesn't have much of a use. Blazing... I mean, Blazing is one of the essentials for PvE alongside Incubus. Solo and, like, small scale, it's... 
I'm gonna all right, okay. This I'm gonna put them hand in hand. I'm gonna put them hand in hand. Where's Incubus? I'm gonna put them both high B. Cause in reality they're both strong together, but overall as like separate weapons, not great. They've got their use PvE, but small scale, like I say, small scale or solo, not used as commonly to be honest. Fist of Ava, A tier, pretty much every single team needs a Fist of Ava for small scale. Knock Up is a perfect setup. If you play it with um, Devastating Combo, even Knock Back, like, it's perfect. Purge is just so perfect for a backline, just d disrupt the backline, works perfectly. Hellfire Hands, high... Nah, I'm, I'm gonna put them low A. They've got their use. The only people I've ever seen them use properly, though, is Equart, like, combined with my Primal. That's the only time I've realistically ever seen them use properly. They can be good in the right hands, like, as overall, as a weapon, great. Solo, though, against PvE, shit. Small scale, fine. Yeah, like, it's just one of those weapons in there for that just one use. Again, though, wait, going back to it, I should say... Because I don't really get round to it at the time. Nature's obviously like your best PvE weapon in the game. I know somebody said, I can't remember, I think it was Lonely. Said that's wild. It's going to be great nature for now. Don't care. Druidic is the same. Druidic and One Hand Nature are the two strongest PvE weapons in Rhodes. That's why that's all you'll ever see. You'll run like Cleric Robe, Torch, Mage Cow. Like... It's perfectly fine. If you're a newer player, then it's like Merc Jacket, Mage Cow, whatever. It's they're 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 the strong like these three right now are the strongest weapons for PvE in Rhodes. That's pretty much half the reason why they're up there. Ursine Maulers, C tier, predictable, not interruptible, sure, but just shit. Brawler gloves, again, shit. Braces can be good, but they're more of like a high. Where would I put them? Put them there. Braces can be good if you're jumping like smaller parties on chests. If you're gathering, they're going to be good for an escape. Small scale, not as much, but they still do have some use. Again, obviously, PV with gloves is going to be shit. Spike gauntlet, again, in C, pointless. Longbow, I... Pfft. Longbow, there's not a huge amount of use for. Honestly. I'll put it low B. Because I know someone's going to enjoy the weapon out there. I enjoy Longbow, but in reality, like... PvE with a Longbow in general is not bad, because you can clump and dump the mobs yourself, but... In reality, small scale and like solo PvP, longbow, you're not going to be able to get away with much. Whispering's probably one of the more essential things for ganking in roads. Everybody has a whispering on their team if they're ganking in roads. Just so much damage. Pisses me off when I'm playing Blood Moon. We we'll put it there. Heavy Mace. I mean, Heavy Mace is obviously like probably next to Earth Room with like the priority tank, especially at the moment with the shapeshifters. Heavy Mace counters shapeshifters so hard. Like, whether people know that or not, the silence and purge all in one is just so useful against shapeshifters. It's so gross. I say it every time on my stream, and you lot here know. If I run into a Heavy Mace in a small scale, more than likely I'm done for. Because the moment I switch form, if I'm silenced, that's their clap. I've got no resistances. It's over. Kamlan I'd want to see more of because I actually think it's an interesting weapon uh, purely because nowadays with the vacuum nerf it's kind of the only clump and dump there is but nobody really uses it I think in actual fact Kamlan's probably more used in PvE I might be wrong or just overall in ZvZ maybe in large scale it's used and I don't know for like raid zones and shit but I don't really see it that much, and obviously, like, overall, is it going to be that good? Solo, no. Like, PV, no. Like, Grail Seeker. Mm, 
let's put it next to double bladed like with an assassin jacket it can be good as a catch for like carry on roads but would i really see it in small scale no the only time i really see it is ganking teams and roads so that's kind of why it's just going to go next to double bladed infernal scythe is a tier i don't care what anyone says infernal scythe is so strong solo it's good not great but it's good pv it's not the best but like small scale in general it yeah it, it slaps it slaps i don't care what anyone says it's it's so good so fun to play same with curse skull teams cannot recover when you chuck a curse skull on their head it, it just doesn't work like overall the aoe damage takes up the entirety the entire god that sounds so british the entire t of a road it's so it's so strong it's so strong those two actually go kind of hand in hand together warbo d shit solo shit ganking shit pv crap Light crossbow is actually decent in PvE. Not so much PvE in roads, but it can be good. PvP, not the best. Like, if we're talking about playing against healers and shit, it's easy to recover against. I've tried it in small scale before. It's not the best, but, like, if we're talking, like, against smaller teams in roads, like, full DPS comps, it can be okay. If you know how to kite... PV, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, it's probably somewhere like there, honestly. Battle Axe, A tier. Goes hand in hand with the natures and shit. Battle Axe is just like one of the ideal PV weapons uh, for roads. It's basically what I recommend to everybody who wants to get into roads. Like, whenever they ask me what's like the first weapon, what's the first build, Battle Axe realistically is going to be your, your number one option pvp up to like 1v3s 1v4s maybe you can get away with if you're lucky pv is gonna be good i think i said pv 1v3 yeah i don't care you you got the idea one hand dagger it, one hand dagger used to be good in pv and roads but with the monk knockdown now the purge on lancers the ring on, uh, I can't remember her name, the, the the blue boss mage. You literally can't really stay in range and get off your full combo. So, used to be good. PvP, like, obviously 1v1s is going to be great, but it's, it's low B. You don't see it in small scale. You don't see it in large scale in roads. Realistically, the only thing carrying it is the PvE. Demon Fang, D tier. Nobody likes Demon Fang. Wildfire, I'm going to put an A tier. Where's One Hand Fire? One Hand Fire is just the shit version of Wildfire, honestly. If you're playing for like a clump and dump, or you really want to just disrupt a back line or even like a front line, the true damage on it is just... Well, it's not true damage, it's um percent max HP damage, isn't it? It's, it's just so strong. Criminally underrated. And probably even better in PvE than One Hand Fire is, honestly. But for some reason, people seem to be drawn to One Hand Fire purely because it's non... Uh, you have to target it. So, yeah, you can't miss it. Mm. Bob the Builder's Hammer. Not the best tank weapon. Can be useful. But overall, there's much better options, realistically. Not really too much I can say about that. One Hand Holy goes in C tier. If you're playing duo in roads and you're playing One Hand Holy, you're just going to die. What's the point? One Hand Mace. High B, purely. Like, if you're playing small scale, it's not the best option, though. You've got Heavy Mace and Golem and um, Great Hammer that are just way better at the moment. It would be okay for, like, ganking teams pve as well it's not too bad but like overall small scale one hand mace is kind of outdated now clarent blade I, I love clarent blade i really do it's definitely my favorite sword it's gonna hurt doing this but it's a c tier 
too predictable, too unreliable. It's not good. I think that's one hand spear. Used to be good in roads. The only time it's ever going to be good in roads now is PvE, and I even doubt that because the mobs are just so messed up. The only time you're going to make it work in PvP is using the mobs to your advantage and landing a knock up. It's going to go high C, maybe like mid C actually, realistically. Heron Spear, going to go mid B. Yeah, there's comps that can use it quite well. But in reality, like Heron Spear uh, for roads, like overall, isn't going to be your best option. Like PV, small scale, solo, it's, it's definitely mid B tier. You can make it work, but you're not going to have a fun time doing it. You're going to need a specific comp to follow up with it. So it ain't great. Daybreaker can go a little bit higher. Purely because of the purge value of it. Like, there's not really much to say. You can sort of... You can sort of interrupt um, a team's um, reset by using Daybreaker. You can also put a lot more pressure on with a purge, but... In reality, it's not going to be... Like, spears overall just aren't really great in roads. They've got good damage output, but besides Daybreaker, like, teams can just easily recover from it. And then Broadsword, obviously. Broadsword in roads. What the hell are you going to do with Broadsword in roads? Everything else? I can't really see a huge use for... No idea what that one even is. Bedrock Mace, I guess, like, large-scale shore in raid zones. But, like, overall, as a weapon, Bedrock Mace is shit. That's Icicle. I never want to see that. Wailing Bow. Couldn't care less. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Pole Hammer, maybe... Could be a low C, honestly, if it's going to go anywhere. Same with um, Tomb Hammer. Can't think of what that one's called. Useless anyway. Great Curse, useless. No idea what that one is. No idea what that one is. These are all old icons. Glaive, Trinity Spear. That one is supposed to be Great Nature, but... Okay, we, wait, we can replace it. There you go. Hope you're happy. Heavy Crossbow, shit. And I'm pretty sure that's Ironclad. Realistically, overall, that's probably like the best Rhodes tier list you're going to see. Like, just overall weapons, like Death Giver, Primal, Blood Letter are going to be on top. And then, obviously, Blood Moon, while I use it a lot, just suffers to any range, but it's still like insanely good at PvE. I can solo group dungeons. I can solo big teams, but they've got to be retarded. Again, like. If we're being realistic and I want to make the PvE enjoyers happy, I'd put a Druidic in S tier. Okay, yeah, Druidic probably is worthy of an S tier. Everything else, I think... A is more of your, like, essential small-scale type stuff. B is more of, like, your ganking. C is stuff you'd use for a fun day out. And then D, just if I see you running that in roads, just get out of roads and go practice something else. Rootbound is good, yeah, but the reason I put rootbound in A is because it's such a priority target now. Whenever I do small scale in roads and there's a rootbound, I call out the rootbound and make sure we get the rootbound out early. Once that combo's down, they're a sitting duck. So yeah. Overall... That sounds about right to me. Best bow for Rhodes is Whispering Bow. Purely because of the ganking factor, yeah. Purely because of the ganking factor. None of the bows are realistically good in Rhodes. But Whispering Bow is like one of the essentials for, gather uh, for gathering, for ganking. I'd say honestly, it's probably one of the most accurate tier lists you're going to see for Rhodes. And I've obviously explained everything and the reasoning behind it, so... If you disagree, then it's what it is.